<laughs> I think I'm live. I'm not sure if I'm live. I think I'm live. Um, you guys let me know if you can hear me, if the video is okay, if the sound is okay, because uh, I have no clue. This is the first time I am using and going live on YouTube using not my phone. <laughs> so I'm um, trying to use my good camera and a decent microphone to see if I can deliver something a little bit different. Uh, but you let me know if the sound is bad or good or if it's too loud or not too loud or not loud enough, if the video is coming through crisp. Um, and uh, I've tried to uh, do a little bit... Um, <clears throat> I've tried to play around with a few pieces of software so when I play, I can actually add some uh, very nice effects as well. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, uh, but for now, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, so this Friday is going to be the first Friday in maybe, I don't know, two years that I haven't done a video for you guys. And the reason for that is that <clears throat> this video, uh, this, this week has been, uh, quite busy for me and, uh, there's been a lot going on. So I just didn't have the time to, um, come up with, with something for you. So I hope that's okay. But, uh, I know a few of you guys wait for a new video every Friday. So uh, I thought I had to uh, do a, at least something. So so I'm going live for you instead. And uh, hopefully we can have a, a, a good time together. I, um, I'll be answering some questions. If you guys have any questions, I'll be playing a little bit as well. Um, pretty much we're just gonna have a good time together. Um, and a little disclaimer, um, this morning I had my COVID shot my first shot in my right arm they they asked me which arm i wanted it in and i had no idea that i could choose myself and without thinking i said my right arm um which now in hindsight was pretty was maybe a bad idea because i can feel that it's it's getting more sore and more sore and let's who knows maybe maybe we'll be uh maybe i'll get numb in like <laughs> 20 minutes from now uh so that, that that's gonna be interesting so um yeah thank you thank you all for for tuning in um i'm just gonna um i'm just gonna tell my my followers on facebook and stuff that i'm doing this so we can have some more people join in and uh until that please let me know where you all uh watching from i'd love to see that i already see some familiar faces in the uh comments um so hello everybody um So let me know where you're all watching from. Um, and if, if you'd like me to uh, give you all a greeting, give your country a greeting, um, I'll be happy to do that. Um, so we have people from India and Slovenia watching. Hello, guys. Um, I'm just going to be doing a little bit of things here on the screen just to make sure everything is up and running. And then we'll get to play some songs for you guys. Um, and for, lo for those of you who are tuned in, um, I, I suppose this could be your lucky day because I'm going to play a brand new never heard before song, a brand new song I'm working on. So um, I hope I hope you're you're thrilled to check that out. So we have people from India, Slovenia, Canada, Australia, Germany, Algeria, Quebec, Canada again. Um, hello, guys. Good to see you all here. I'm excited. <clears throat> As you can probably hear, I'm a little bit rusty in my voice. I have no clue why that is. Um, as far as I remember, I haven't been screaming or yelling. Oh, wait a second. I know actually why. I was playing, 
Um, I was playing a game yesterday with uh, with one of my friends. Um, I was playing uh, Worms. If any of you, if there is any old souls here, um, I was playing a fr- uh, yesterday uh, a, fr- a game yesterday with him, and uh, we were playing Worms. And uh, normally, I'm not a bad loser, but when I play against Mike, um, I go completely rage when I lose, and I, um, I'm screaming a lot. So. That's probably why I'm a little rusty today. Um, so yeah, we got uh, we got Vaxel here. Hello, Robert. Hey, Robert. Hello from Japan, from Jacob. Jacob, Maryland, USA, Germany again. Cool guys. Cool. Let's um, let's just play a song and 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 let's see if this works. I've uh, I've tried to do something pretty cool, which I have no idea. If it'll work, so we'll check it out. Um, let's do this guitar right here. So, if everything is, because you might wonder right now, like Casper, we can't see your guitar. Um, so if I click this button, you should be able to see it. I don't know if this works. Let me know if you can now see two cameras or not. <laughs> this is the first time doing this. Uh, let's. Uh, Man, I had I had a feeling that this was gonna go wrong so much. It was the first time I'm uh, I'm streaming like this. And usually when I try out something, it never works. Okay, sounds good. Alright, so let's see. I'm gonna take the mic down here to the guitar and then I'm gonna press this secret button. And of course now I also have reverb on my voice. But I'm <laughs> I'm gonna turn it on and off as we go. Is it, is it good? Does it sound good? I like how my voice sounds with the reverb. We are all gathered here today. Yeah. Okay. This is D-Day.
Excuse me. <clears throat> that was uh, that was my little rusty version of D-Day. <clears throat> um, yeah, it was a uh, is a fun song to play, and um, I, I really enjoy that. It's um, it's one of these songs where where the guitar is actually in standard tuning, but because of the partial cable that's sitting right here, it it sounds like an alternate tuning, which is pretty cool. So basically, the cable just covers the the A, the D, and the G string, but it leaves the top E open, which is very interesting. So when you when you put it on, you're actually fretting these three strings right here on the second fret, but you can also stick it on the other way. So it covers the B, the G, and the D from the other, and and that's just gonna you know that's just gonna be an A chord, just like that. So these are great. Um, the one I use is from G Seventh, uh, but uh, I think there's also a few other brands who uh, who creates them. The reason why I like this particular one is that it's super small, and um, as you can see, um, as you can see. When I do D-Day, I, I often go behind the cable because these strings here are still open as well as the E string. So sometimes I need to go behind the cable to do something. And um, so that's why I pretty much want this little partial cable. Let me show it to you right here. I, I want that to be you know as small as possible so it doesn't get in the way. Um, and you can really experiment with these, you know, sort of uh, the, these little things. You can even um, put it up higher like that, and then you can cable up behind it, which you essentially just doing the same tuning as, as, as you know, you're, you're just fretting from the second fret. So then you can bring this on here and then you, uh, so you can do all sorts of really cool stuff while still being in standard tuning. So you don't have to retune. Um, um, let me, uh, let me show you like a few things you can do with it. So you can, uh, Um, all that stuff can be achieved just by using, you know, these little cool gadgets right here. Um, so it's not that I have anything against open tunings at all. I mean, I use them all the time, but sometimes it's really nice to, to explore different voicings and different accents without actually having to, uh, retune. So, so yeah, um, man, I'm digging this guitar. Um, yeah, so um, that was D-Day, uh, one of my original songs, and um, if anyone's interested in learning that, I have the tabs available on my website, um, which is smanmusic.com. Um, it's also, I, I also provide lessons on my website, and D-Day is the most requested thing that I do in my lessons. Of, of all the lessons, I think 8 out of 10 has been about uh, learning D-Day, so that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's answer some questions, and uh, then we can uh, we can play some other stuff. Um, remember, as I said in the beginning, for those who just joined, um, um, I'm a little numb in my right arm because I just got my my uh, my first vaccine jab today. So I'm I'm a little sore in my in my arm, and I kind of like feel it going down here, um, which is that's my excuse if I make mistakes today. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, and I'm gonna kind of premiere a brand new song that I'm writing on later in the live stream. But uh, it's not done yet. Uh, the song is still in the writing phase. So, uh, but I think uh, because I, I really appreciate my, you know, you guys more than you know, and uh, I want to hear what you think of it so far. Because um, at the end of the day, the most important thing for me is that you like the song. So if you tell me already right now that, nah, you know what? You should probably rewrite that. Then I know what I have to spend, you know, a lot of time on. So, all right, let's see. Let's uh, answer some comments here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, 
Are you married? No, I am not. Um, next level, Casper. You're my absolute favorite guitarist. Thank you so, man. Thank you so much. I, I really uh, appreciate that. So groovy. Are you married? No, I am not married. Hey, Casper, do you miss the 2017 music message? Man, I miss everything that has to do with getting out and play. Um, yeah, the music mess in 2017 was, it was the last one that I attended. Haven't been there ever since. Congrats. <laughs> what vaccine did you get? I get, I got the Moderna. Moderna. Yeah, that's the one. I don't think that there's, I mean, I don't know. That was the one that they gave me and I couldn't really choose. So I was like, let's see. It's got to get, um gonna be interesting to see the next couple of days if, I, if I'm going totally down. For now, I'm fine. I, I don't feel anything right now. It's been like five, about five hours since I got it. And the only thing I can feel right now is like I'm a little bit sore in my arm. Um, did you ever play with Jung So Kim? No, I have never played with him before. Um, so, but I, that, that, that'd be really cool to uh, do that one day. Um, when, when I, uh, when I discovered Jungsu, which was like, I don't know, six months ago, and I was so late discovering that guy. Um, my friend Bob, uh, you should check him out on YouTube as well, by the way. Bobu Sama is his uh, YouTube channel name. He introduced me to Jungsu Kim like six months ago. And I was like, how did I not know about this guy until now? And what I really like about him is like, when I listen to his songs, his song sounds exactly like something that I could have written. Like, and, and with that, that I'm, I mean that we kind of have the same composing style and stuff like that. So I like to tell, I like to say to my friends that Jung Soo Kim is the South Korean Casper. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and he's, um, and I am the uh, Danish Jung Soo Kim. So um, that's pretty cool. He's a really, really cool player. Hope I get the chance to, uh, to uh, jam with him someday. Why do you use dreadnought shaped guitar so much? Um, I don't know. Um, well, this one is not. This is a Grand Auditorium shaped guitar. But I use dreadnoughts because I'm a pretty big guy. Um, I'm 195 uh, centimeters. I don't know what that is in foot. I think that's six foot four or something like that. Um, so a lot of uh, like 808s or OMs or even grand auditoriums can feel really small to me when I when I hold it. It feel almost feels like I'm holding a ukulele. <laughs> so I'm using dreadnoughts mm. because I like I like the shape of the guitar. I like, you know, it, it's like it fits my body size better. Um, it's not that I think they have a certain sound that I go after, um, but I've just gotten so used to playing dreadnought guitars. So that's what I, why I use them so much. But I still like other shapes. I mean, um, behind me in, in the rack here, I have all sorts of body shapes, right from OMs to jumbos to, I think all guitars can do something different, you know, so. Who's your favorite guitarist and what's your favorite song? Oh man, um, favorite guitarist is extremely hard for me to answer because there are so many great players out there and they all do something different in their own way. So that makes them great during what they doing what they do. Um, so I can't really answer that. The closest we can get is Tommy Manuel because he's the guy that made me play. You know, he's the guy that made me want to play the guitar when I was younger. So he will always be my main inspiration and my you know hero because he changed my life forever. But of course, ever since then, I've discovered so many amazing players, and they all they all have different things to offer and and. So my favorite song tends to change a lot. Like it's like going through phases. Um, there's also always one song that I keep coming back to that I think it's a masterpiece, um, which is Aerial Boundaries by Michael Hedges. That song is perfect in, in every way to me. Um, the song tells a story from, from right from the beginning, right till the end. It really takes you through a bunch of emotions when you hear that song. And, and for me personally, that's what music is all about, you know. I do not care one single bit about how many techniques you use or how many followers you have or how many fans you have. To me, it's all about the music. And when I listen to a piece of music, does it make me feel something or not? That's, that's all I care about. 
And so um, it's not that people that are technically skilled that I don't have respect for them. Of course, I know they've been going through a lot of practice to do what they do. Um, but I'm a little bit more, uh, what would I say, old school, if that's the right word to use. You know, I, for me, it's all about the music. And when I listen to it, does it make me feel something? That's, that's the most important thing. Um, all right, let's see. Let's uh, take some more comments here. Whoops. Oh, my God, it just jumped. Uh, let me see. Do you watch anime? Not as much as I used to. I used to watch a lot. Uh, but right now, I don't watch a lot. Um, have my vacation on Wednesday, finally getting back to feeling like me again. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm also very curious to see what's going to happen over the next couple of days. Hello, Kazakhstan. Favorite guitarist on YouTube? Um, yes, I just answered on the other comment. Uh, I don't really have any favorite guitarists as well. And I don't like the term YouTube, like favorite guitarist on YouTube. Uh, it's just... I mean, guitar players are guitar players. <laughs> You're my all-time favorite with love from India. Thank you, India. Have you ever played with Daniel Padim or Lucas Stricagnoli? No, I have not. Uh, however, I have ha I have been with Luca. We have been playing a uh, festival together a few years ago in Poland. And uh, so we we've hanged out together and I've tried his triple neck guitar in his hotel room. What a what a crazy instrument that is. <sighs> Are you in contact with Song Ha Jung? We I used to be his tour promoter back in the day in Scandinavia, so I used to book all his concerts and we've done a few videos together, but we're both now, you know, doing our own thing, so we don't have too much time. Uh Six foot four. You probably bump your head on the door frame. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Greetings from Thailand. I have the Kedma A1. It's very perfect. That's this guitar. Congratulations. It's a great guitar. I love mine too. Since you mentioned him, have you ever met or played with Tommy Manuel? Yes, I have. Several times. So, there's also videos you just have to go on, like, on YouTube and search. There's uh, plenty of videos. Um... All right, let's um, let's do a few more questions and then then let me play my my brand new song for you that I'm still working on. So don't judge me too hard if I may make mistakes because it's uh, it's I'm still learning how to play the song myself. Um, but let's do a few more comments first. Any tips on ordering songs for a live performance? Do you always start with your simplest song? Uh, this is a very good question. Um, for me, it's it's different from all guitar players, I, I, I assume. But for me, I don't. I ever never really go on stage with a set list as such. Um, when I go on tour, I usually have 20, 25 songs prepared in my live repertoire. So I know that there's at least 25 songs I can play from start to finish, you know, without making mistakes. Um, but the only song I really plan is the song I start with. And then from there, I usually feel the audience like, so if I can feel like the audience are like really pumped, I will keep on doing some, it's, it's really dynamic. So you really have to feel the room if you have to take it up a notch or take it down a notch. Uh, I don't start with my simplest song necessarily. Um, I don't look at songs like that. For me, it's all about the song itself, not how hard it is to play it, but what will the song do to the room I'm playing for? So typically, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very different. Um, so, okay, let me do a quick guitar change here because I don't want to be spending too much time retuning. Whoops. Let's get this one. You might, this one might be familiar to you. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, Daniel Padim is great. Funny thing, we, we both covered um, a Coldplay song the exact same day and released at the exact same time, the same song. We both did Yellow at the same time. 
And back then, we we didn't know about each other. He didn't knew I existed. I didn't know I didn't knew he existed. So it was quite fun. So actually, because we both covered the same song and released it the exact same time, that's how we got to talk together in the first time. Like we wrote each other. Like yeah, that's so funny. Um, now, how, where did I write that? Um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try to uh, play my brand new song for you now. Again, for those who just tuned in, this is a, a brand new song I'm working on that I'm writing, an original song. Um, and uh, it's still in the writing phase. It's not finished yet. Um, so there are still a lot of things that might change. And I, I haven't really written certain parts yet. So right now it only consists of like an introduction, um, like in a reprise of that, and then, you know, a verse and a chorus and a bridge. But it still needs a few sections in order to glue everything together. So, so this is a very, very rough idea that I'm going to share with you right now. And again, don't mind the mistakes because the song is so new, I still have trouble remembering things. So, um, um, so I'm going to play that for you. Also, I don't have a title for it yet. Um, so if you have any ideas with titles, um, let me know, you know, I, I would be happy to, to get some good song title requests. If I end up using any of, uh, of the, uh, if I end up using any of your ideas, um, I will contact the person that came with the best idea and, uh, I'll see if I can do something for you. Maybe some free taps and a free CD, signed CD or something like that. Um, so, um, but I can't, I can't promise anything, of course. So I'm gonna be very honest. I've, if I don't like any of the suggestions, I'm obviously not gonna use it. But if there's somebody who just gives the best title I've ever heard in my life for this song, um, you know, okay. Light and Leiden Schafterlicht, passionate. Yeah, maybe you want to hear the song before coming with the title. <laughs> um, all right. Can you please lower the camera so we can see you play? No worries, man. I got you covered. Boom. Look at that. Um, all right. Right. Okay, a brand new song. Again, if you just joined, it's not finished yet, so don't judge me too hard.
So that's a little uh, snippet of the new song. Again, it was very, it was a little rough, um, but again, I'm still learning the song myself. I'm not totally comfortable in playing it yet, but hopefully in a few months, uh, I'm aiming for this song to release sometime in August, uh, full release on Spotify and YouTube and everything. And by then it should sound much better. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that's good. Um, right, so let's see what you have to say. Beautiful cover. This wasn't a cover, man. This was an original song. Don't you dare. <laughs> All right. Let's have a look. So it seems like you like it so far. I'm very, very happy about that. Why am I getting Masaki Kishibe vibes? Because, well, I would assume it's because I love Masaki Kishibe. So, you know, all of us, all guitar players sound a little bit like their heroes and main inspirations. So I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> does that song, does the song have any story behind it? Um, I wanted to write a lullaby. That was like the initial thought of the song. But so when I, when I still had this thing going on right here, which is. Oh my goodness. Let's do that again. You know that and also the, uh, the bridge. It was, it was a lullaby. Uh, I think it was very calm and very nice. And then when I got to write the chorus, I didn't really know. I had a lot of ideas for the chorus, but then I, I went into... And that's maybe a little too rough for a lullaby. So now it's not really a lullaby anymore, but it could still be something about dreaming or something like that. Um, but it's very hard to find title these days because all the good ones are already taken, you know? This could be like a dream about flying towards the moon or I don't know. <laughs> there, there are so many things to choose from. Um, yeah. I used to listen to your songs and covers as I go to sleep. Happy about that. I know that a lot of my song, my stuff is very mellow. So, man, this feels like it comes straight out of a Disney movie. Dude, that's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> Can you give me the chords, please? It's beautiful. You will get taps and everything once the song is released. Obviously, I cannot release anything for it right now because it's not done. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it really does sound like a Disney movie of some sort. Uh, but I'm a Disney guy, you know, I love Disney movies. But uh, it, yeah, it does. it does have that movie soundtrack feel to it. Um, so I, I, I have a lot of requests and a lot of, um, no, suggestions here about the, uh, um, about the song title. So I'll, I have your names, you know, I can always go back and read the comments. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. If, if I, um, just have a look in your YouTube channel, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write you if I decide to go with any of your titles. Um. Right. Reminds me of a dancer. Yeah, some sort. Yeah, yeah. Um, are, you, are you ever going to put your song Stay on Spotify? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the thing about Spotify is I'm a little bit behind in getting everything posted there. Um, so it, everything you'll see on, you see on YouTube is going to Spotify. It's just going out with a little delay on it. Uh, for instance, today my cover of Unravel just dropped on Spotify. So I'm a little behind, but I am right now I'm pushing to get as as all this stuff out on Spotify and all and the other streaming services as fast as I can. Um, I might have to collect everything into albums and just post them as albums instead. Um, so so don't you worry, guys, it's all gonna be on Spotify, all of it. Can I have your microphone info? Um, yeah, you only th the only thing you have to do for that is go on my website or just check the description of every video that I've ever done. There's uh, in the description, there's something where it says gear and then a link 
right underneath that. And it'll take you to my website where there's a complete list of everything I use, right from guitars, microphones, interface, cables, everything. So, but this microphone is an Aston Origin microphone. It's quite, uh, it's, a, it's a nice microphone. It's, it's good for speaking, but it's also good for a uh, recording guitar. Um, yeah. Hey Casper, for an intermediate level player, do you think there is a need to learn more easier pieces or can I learn the harder ones even though it'll take more time? Um, there's not a, there's no rules, man. You can, if there is a hard song you want to learn, go for it. Um, you don't necessarily have to work your way up slowly piece by piece. Uh, a lot of people would, would tell you that that's the right thing to do. And it might be the right thing to do. That's, that's, it's not really about what level you're on now. It's about how do you approach new songs and, 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 and how fast of a learner you are. Uh, for me, when I started playing, I, I didn't really care about how difficult a song was. If I wanted to play it, I wanted to play it. And I knew that I could choose an easier song that would take me a week to learn, but I went for the songs that inspired me and it would take me three, four months to learn them. But um, yeah, of course, if you're, if you're going to try to bite over something that's way too big for you, uh, you're going to discover that really quickly. But um, I wouldn't say that there's any right or wrong thing to do. Uh, a lot of guitar teachers might come after me for saying this, but hey, I don't know. Um, I learned I learned playing guitar from teaching myself. Um, and the way I taught myself was just keep learning new songs. So, um, yeah. From how long, from how long you know Edward Ong? Oh man, I knew Edward since he was a baby. Yeah, he's like my little brother. I don't know how to name it, but it will be very nice to listen to while riding bicycles at the riverside. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. You were joking about not being comfortably com comfortable playing it right. No, dude, I wasn't. I actually wasn't joking. Believe it or not, I can I get nervous, too. And especially when it comes to original music. So when I post a cover on YouTube, that's some that's one thing. But when I post an original song on YouTube, I'm actually always really, really nervous when I when I have to post an original song. Because I when you when you write music yourself and putting it out there for people, um, you are pretty much giving a little piece of yourself to people, you know? Because when I write songs, it's I it's about what's going on in here. And here, you know, it's all my feelings putting into a piece of music. So it's like when you show people something you wrote yourself, you feel very, very naked. Um, and especially if it's it's a brand new piece and you don't know how people are going to react on it. Um, you are definitely, at least for me, I, I react really hard on that. So um, for songs that I've been playing over and over again, on my original pieces and I, that I know people like, it's way easier for me, but if it's a new song, I'm I'm always super nervous. So, <laughs> um. all right. Oh my God, Callum McGall, how are you doing, my man? Go check Callum out. He's uh, he's a heck of a player. I find the song very suiting for today's weather in Denmark. Warm, rainy, with occasional sun coming through. Dude, you might be onto something there. I can see by your name, Morden, that uh, we probably have another fellow Dane in here. If, does anyone in here know any Danish? I know it's a very uncommon language for a lot of people. If you know any Danish, let me know. You can even use Google Translate if you want. <laughs> Dream Dancer. Mmm, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Joe, you might be onto something right there. We'll see. We'll see. I'll definitely write that down as a potential candidate, that's for sure. Um, when the rain gently wanes. Hmm, good, good. Can you play better that in that than Inward Ong? Man, 
we don't don't ever ask anybody about that it's not about who can play better music is not a competition dude never ever go down that path it's a toxic path um you know but to answer your question um edward is doing what he does and i am doing what i do you know we both do very separate things very different things on the guitar so i think we both have our ways of expressing ourselves and yeah in general i think it's very very bad and and very wrong to compare guitar players because we are all different and we all do different stuff um there's definitely things edward can do that i cannot do but there's definitely also things i can do that edward can do um and that's that's just how we all are uh but i'm not gonna sit here and say if i'm better than a friend of mine that's very dear to me because i'm i'm not that's the reality so yeah guys don't 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 compare guitar players it's stupid there's there's no reason to do that um it's not about who's better um it's a subjective thing you know music is all about taste individual taste so dreaming in starry night that's a good one too memories of you i like that the only problem with that title is that I already writ I already wrote a song called Memories of Home <laughs> with my friend Colin Hill. You should check that out, by the way. It's on his channel and it's also on Spotify. Memories of Home. Uh, we're pretty proud of that song. Um, it's also a waltz like this one, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um... What's the most difficult fingerstyle technique to learn and use? All of them. <laughs> They're all difficult in their own way. They all have things that are hard to, um, you know, to do. I would say one of the most hardest techniques to master is the boom chick, you know? So, so the technique like this one, It's the, it's the exercise that looks like it's the easiest one, but to nail this alternate bass line, you know, the four, no, the five, four, six, four, five, four, six, four, where you at the same time have to take account and for, uh, take into account every time you move the root note, you also have to cha uh, change the pattern here. But right, this specific technique, while these fingers are doing all sorts of stuff, to get that down and actually being able to do that without this finger, you have to keep this going no matter what happens, no matter what. Even if you're starting tapping down here or this one has to keep on going. It's a really, really hard exercise to get right, but a lot of people tend to skip it because they think this sounds like, because it sounds boring. But this technique is, if you ask me, one of the fundamentals when it comes to learning finger independence, which is the most important thing when you play fingerstyle. Um, but I would assume, you know, there's, again, there's a lot of techniques that are hard. You know, it's also hard to do cascading harmonics. It's also hard to do pinch harmonics. Everything is hard when you begin doing it, but after repeating it and practicing it, it becomes easy. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that there's one exercise that that's, or one technique that's harder than the rest of them. For all the techniques I've ever learned, they were all extremely hard in the beginning. And then once you get the hang of it, it's like riding a bicycle. You never forget it. Um, you know, it's it's all about muscle memory. That's all it really is. All right. How many guitars are there in your room? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. There's 13. I used to have a little bit more, but... I recently moved to a new place and I, I, I didn't have that much space anymore. So I had to, uh, uh, some of my guitars are at my, my granddad's place and I had to uh, sell a few of them and then I gave a few of them away as well. So the flower I saw, that's a good one too. Hey Forrest, how are you doing, man? Are you at Cass right now? I'm super jealous. Let everyone know that I said hi. I've told Colin to uh, give me a FaceTime sometime today when he has time so I can say hi to you all. I would love that. You can even just, you have my number on WhatsApp, right, Forrest? So, you know, 
Not right now, because uh, I'm using my phone as the secondary camera, that one right there. So if you call right now, that'll turn off. But uh, when I'm done with the live stream, give me a video call, man. I'd love to say hi to everyone. Um, um, what are your thoughts on changing arrangement over time? Is there any video you look back and think I would do that song differently? Ma'am, that's such a good question. Um, yeah, definitely. And I've actually, my, my recent couple of videos that I've done is actually re- rearrangements of um, arrangements I made a few uh, years ago. So uh, yeah, I definitely look back at some of my older arrangements and say mm, that need that needs a refresh because I've changed a lot over the time and I think I could do it better now. Um, but some of them I'm like, you know, it has its charm. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. But uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm trying to get through as many comments as I can, but this section right here keeps jumping back and forth. So I'm, I'm trying the best I can. I am trying to get all the comments as, if I missed your comment, if you feel free to write it again. Uh, when it comes to song requests, um, I, I will try to play a few of your requests, but uh, I mean, don't you think it's more fun that we can actually talk together? Because, you know, the songs I'm going to play now are already on YouTube. Uh, but uh, I'll be happy to play a little bit of... Uh, I see a lot of uh, a lot of requests for Like a Star. Uh, I can play a little bit of it. Um, I'm not going to play all of it because it's a six and a half minute song. <laughs> so I'm just going to play a little bit of it. If I remember it. I haven't really been playing it since I recorded it. <laughs> Wait a second. That's not the tuning I need. Uh, wait a second. You ready to see the string break? I'm pretty sure the string will break. Nope, we're good. Probably a bit out of tune, but let's see. All right, let's just do a little bit of uh, like a star, and hopefully I won't mess it up too much. It's just I haven't really played it since I recorded it. Um, let's try. Actually, there's um, let me take that reverb off. I, I talked with one of my friends the other day on, on, on Discord, um, and and he he said he actually thought in the video that I faked the capo change, like I just did a split recording, what we call crossfading, 
because I don't have a slider cable, right? So I have to take, I just use a, a G7, right? And the way you get that cable off is you actually just take it like this and you lift it. Um, so, so this part was kind of hard to me, you know? But it's, it's real, I can do it. <laughs> just, just as there anyone else that thought I was faking that. It's, no, it's, it's real, you know? So it's durable. You, you can be sure that everything I do in my videos are real. Like I don't fake anything in my videos. Of course you'll, sometimes I add a bit of a uh, synthesizer or MIDI, you know, some strings on my uh, songs, like violins and stuff like that. But that's very obvious for the listener that there's something else in the track. So I never do anything with my hands on the guitar that's faked. Uh, because the problem is everything I do on YouTube, I want to be able to do that when I play concerts. So if I fake it on YouTube, I have a problem when I go out in real life. So may, you, you can be sure that I'm not faking anything you're seeing. Um, yeah, so that was a little bit of a, like a star. Very rough though, I haven't, I haven't played it for a, a long time. All right. Um, oh man, I think I'm missing out so many comments here. I'm so sorry. I'll do my best to uh, catch up on all of them. Do you remember all original songs you wrote? Yes. All my originals, I never forget those for some reason. With arrangements, I have to practice them regularly. Regu regularly? Reg regularly? I don't know. <laughs> Otherwise, I I'll forget them pretty quickly. But originals, I never forget them. They, they really just get stuck in a different way. It's, it's a very, very weird thing, but I, I never forget my uh, original songs. How many music instruments can you play? Um, I think two. <laughs> you know, if we're talking about actually being able to play them well, you can see there's, uh, let me remove this. There is a piano right there in the, um, in the corner. Uh, so I play piano um, and I play guitar. That's the only two instruments I can play quite well, but I mean, I can play a bit of drums and a bit of this and that, but not well. I mean, if it was like that, we could all just say that we played a hundred instruments just because we can know, we know a little bit, but uh, yeah. Do you like flamingo style guitar? Yeah, man, that's, that's really cool. I can't play it though, but uh, right. Oh, you had to skip Cass, man, that sucks. Me too. <laughs> At what point in your guitar playing did you start making arrangements? I think I, I don't know. I, I think I pretty much started making arrangements pretty much, I don't know, not from day one, but very early on, I started experimenting with arrangements, you know? Um, it's not something that's ever seen the day of light. The first arrangement I ever made that I made public was We Are One from, from The Lion King. At that time, I think I've been playing for three years, but that was the first arrangement I made that I shared with people. Um, but before that, you know, I was just trying to make arrangements, but obviously, you know, when, when you haven't been playing for a long time, you don't really have the necessary, necessary tools and knowledge to create an arrangement. By that, I mean, making an arrangement is way, way easier when you know your fretboard. You know, so when you know what, where every chord is on the fretboard, maybe, you know, not every chord, but if you know where most chords are on the fretboard, it's going to be way easier for you to start making arrangements, but it'll take time. You know, I've been playing for 15, 16 years now, and it's not until now that I actually think that my arrangements are becoming interesting, you know? So it'll take time, but your arrangements will evolve as you evolve as a player. The better you get, the better your arrangements get. Um, can you sing a love song? No freaking way. I'm not going to sing anything. <laughs> can you play something really percussive? Um, I don't really do percussive playing. That's not really my style, man. Um, the, the closest... The closest thing I'll get to playing percussive is the Kotaro Oshio style, which I dig a lot, you know, which is, which is. So 
So that that's like the closest, you know. That's that's what I like when it comes to percussive guitars, but I don't do a lot of, you know, of any of that. I'll maybe do one of these from time to time. In D-Day, I do this one, which is you just roll the strings with your fingers while they're muted. And you go quick down like that. You know? Like on a, what you would do on a, uh, on a drum. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> so, but I don't do a lot of percussion playing because that, that's just not the type of player that I am. Again, we all, we all do something different. <sighs> Who keeps liking and disliking? <laughs> I don't know, man. Some, probably somebody who's bored. <laughs> you have a guitar for every tuning. Nice. Yeah, you would, you would think so, but actually a lot of the guitars are in the same tuning. I don't know why. I just don't keep every guitar in each tuning. Uh, I should have done that. Misty Spring Morning. That made me think of a walk by the lake on an early misty spring morning. Man, I like that too. No perfect pitch. No, I don't. I don't have perfect pitch. I have a good ear, so I can I can distinguish a chord and a note really quickly. Um, I can usually, by, just by listening to a song, I can tell pretty much within five seconds what key the song is in. Um, but and I and if I you know if I if I can ask somebody to play a note on the piano or a note on the guitar and I can usually tell pretty much instantly what note that is. But that is not perfect pitch. Perfect pitch is a whole another level. Um, you know, with perfect pitch, you can you can answer like within a second and you can even answer complex chords. You can tell every note in that chord and I'm not able to do that at all. Uh, I can tell tones, I can tell chords, whether it's, you know, a seventh or a major or a minor, if it's a diminished, you know, all that. I can do that, but not more than that. So, um, yeah. Do you think the importance of fresh strings is underrated? underrated? I always get surprised how much of a difference new strings can make on a medium to cheaply priced guitars. Yeah, man. I mean, for me, new strings are everything. I mean, I love the sound of new strings. There's a lot of players who really like the sound of old strings. I mean, a lot of blues players, you know, they really like that dull, fat, I don't know how to describe it, you know, this really, really fat, old sound of strings. For me, I like it crisp, you know, I want a crisp sound. Um, so yeah, I like new strings and, and these are these are my favorites, by the way. Let's see if we can get a focus on that. Um, yeah, the, these are my preferred strings at the moment. Um, they sound super crisp and they're super nice. Um, on this guitar though, the strings on this one is quite old. I haven't changed them for a while, which is, uh, which is bad. <laughs> um, 20 bucks to do it with a shop. <laughs> Challenge accepted, man. <laughs> I, I can't do it with a shop. I think yeah, it's pretty much impossible to move the cable that fast with a shop. Mm-hmm. Could you play always? I most certainly could. Let's do a little bit of always, another one of my original songs. By the way, I don't know if you've seen it, but I've just launched a new Discord server a few days ago. And uh, so far, it's a really cool place, and hopefully, it will be even cooler if you join. Uh, so it's it's a Discord server. It's totally free to join. Uh, the link for the server is in my YouTube community tab, but it's also in my Instagram events moments, I think, uh, and on my Facebook page. So the link is to be found. You can find it everywhere. Um, I think it's called Casper's Club. So in there, there is uh, a lot of people that loves fingerstyle guitar and, 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 and they all talk about uh, pretty much everything. Also, if you like games and you're into gaming, there's something for everyone in there. And I'm pretty much in there on a daily basis, um, chatting to people and, and we even have a video and voice chat where we also get together sometimes and play and talk and just have fun. So um, you should definitely uh, check out the Discord server. Okay, let's do uh, let's do a little bit of always with a good old reverb on.
Let's get a second angle on that. so that is always that song is already always an emotional roller coaster to play especially when you're playing live and like everything is super loud and, and really goes through it's, it's quite a hard song to, to play through because I'm cabled all the way up at the 8th fret and 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 as you can see on the back of the guitar this is kind of where the the uh, fret like the neck joins the guitar so you don't have a lot of space here for your hand and, and it's especially when you get up here 
you know, all the way up here at the 13th fret. And... Also like that. It, it's quite hard to play all the way up here. And another thing is, when you're capo up that high, you can't really have a low action, because then it's just gonna be bussy. So you gotta have a relatively high action when you play all the way up here. So it, it's a it's quite a it's quite a tough song to get through. Um, yeah, I, I had to. I remember when I recorded this, I had to, I think I spent all day to get it clean because it was it was so hard to get through it. But uh, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. let's uh, let's see if we can do some more questions. <laughs> oh damn, double cam, and it rhymes. <laughs> Um, Leon Alex is in the house. I think most of you uh, already know him, but if you don't, go check him out. He's a he's a heck of a player, a good friend of mine as well. Um, can someone upload the record of this live stream afterwards? No, nobody can do that. This is my live stream. It's my video. Don't worry, it's gonna be on my channel. I'm not gonna delete it. Uh, unless somebody ticks me off and I'm gonna say something bad, but I'm, I don't think I will. This is gonna be, uh, I'll, I'll leave the video up on the channel afterwards, so, uh, so don't worry about that. Um, okay, let's do some, uh, a few more questions here. Uh, can you show me how to use perfect harmonics for a song? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. I'm sorry. Is perfect pitch learned or something you're born with? Man, I think I think Google knows that answer better than I do, but I'm pretty sure that perfect pitch, the term perfect pitch, is something you're born with. I don't think you can learn perfect pitch, but you can learn to have a really good pitch. You, like you can work on your ears and develop a really good ear, which is what I did. I was never, I was, I wasn't born with good ears, you know. Uh, as such, it's something I've learned myself along the years. But I, I, I'm not sure if you can learn yourself perfect pitch. But you can you can get pretty close, I guess. Um, how do I arrange songs? Well, I listen to the original song, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I listen to it, and as I just told uh, you before, when I with with my I use my ears, and then I can typically tell pretty much straight away what key the song is in and what chords are in the song and then from there I just I just start playing it I just start coming up with small ideas and I don't really I don't have any step-by-step -step things that I always do when I arrange songs it's it's different sometimes it, it comes like that I just need to listen to the song and the arrangement is already there and sometimes I have to uh, spend a few weeks on it before I can get a good idea because you know when I arrange songs, I want them to be interesting. Um, I want the arrangements to be pleasant to listen to and interest, interesting to listen to because, um, yeah, just because. <laughs> because when you, when you arrange a song on acoustic guitar, you take away the most important part of the song. You remove the singer from the song, you know? With all the lyrics, you take that away. So I think a good arrangement is an interesting arrangement. And by that I don't talk about adding as many nonsense things as you can, and as many hits and stuff. That's not what I mean with interesting. Now I, I'm talking purely about interesting for your ears to listen to. So I want to make every arrangement as enjoyable to the listener as I can. I want everyone to do this when they do, when they listen to one of my arrangements and still be entertained, you know? so. That's that's my way of approaching an arrangement. I always think like that. I want it to sound as good as I can. I don't care about how it looks. I don't care about if people are gonna like say that I don't use enough fancy techniques and stuff. That's not what music is about for me. Um, so I always want my stuff to sound as good as possible. That's my my main goal. And also, um, yeah, you know. <laughs> Um, I started learning this one and I immediately realized that I'm terrible at using one thing finger to get three strings for the A. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's weird, right? It's, it's, uh, let me see if I can get a close up shot. I do that all the time, you know, where I fret certain strings. I don't know if we can get a good visual on that, 
but so I pretty much bend my finger in a pretty unnatural way like that you see so it only covers th the three top strings and the rest <laughs> remains open and then you can still get under it and do stuff like that it's a weird bend um, I don't know. I don't know if it's anything special. I don't know how many people can do that, but it's not something I'm, I'm not a hypermobile, uh, if that's what it's, what it's called. Um, it's not something I was born with. I think it's just about, you know, keep, keep practicing weird shapes and then your fingers are slowly gonna, uh, you know, evolve into what you want them to do. It's, it's the same thing as you see on my right hand, you know, my thumb is getting more and more bendy because I'm, I'm, I'm having my thumb at an angle all the time. And it's like during the years, my, my fingers are kind of adjusting to be a guitar player because I play so much, but yeah, it's, it's weird. It's also, you know, the thing where you sometimes, where I sometimes cover two strings in a stretch with my little finger and you have to cover two strings at once. It's hard. It's super hard, but there's only one way you can learn it. And that is to keep on practicing those stretches and you'll get it. Sometimes you'll get it one day. Lyder skide godt. Tak. Håber der kommer mere. Tak skal du have, Kim. Another fellow Dane there. I just answered him in Danish, which might sound very fun to uh, a lot of you guys. <laughs> Where do you live? Are you are you playing gigs again, or is the pandemic still stopping you? Um, I live in Denmark. Um, everything here is starting to look really good. So I'm not playing live yet. But hopefully at the end of this year, I will start playing concerts again. But I, I usually don't play in Denmark a lot. Um, I would maybe play a show or two in Denmark once a year. But most of the time I am, I am playing in the rest of Europe and um, I'm playing a lot in Asia. Um, so um, hopefully um, we can, I can start playing soon. But I have some stuff coming up. It's not yet 100% confirmed. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching a guitar camp in, in Denmark with uh, with Perry, Perry Steinbeck and a lot of other great guitar players. We're doing a guitar camp the first week of August um, in Denmark, which is on my website. You can go check it out. I'm not sure if it's sold out yet, um, but the last thing they told me is that there's not a lot of spaces left. But from outside of Denmark, I do have some stuff coming up in October, November. It is not yet confirmed, so I would advise you to take a look at my website um, under the tour or shows, I think it's called. And you can even sign up for getting notifications when new shows are announced. Um, what was that? That sounded like I just activated Siri. Wait a second, gotta check. Oh yeah, Siri, stop. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, this is very normal here. Um, my friends that I talk a lot with in Discord, they know this all the time that when 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 we uh, sit and talk, then suddenly Siri activates on my phone and wants to do a lot of stuff. And all every time I need her or him, I've actually never heard it with a man spoken before. This is the first time. Oh. Um, she always activates when I don't need her, but when I actually need her, she never reacts. It's, it's super weird. Um, Um, I have noticed you put echo while playing. I don't use echo. What you might, what you can hear is maybe reverb, which is this. Reverb pretty much just emulate that you are in a bigger room, you know, like a church or something like that. It's all, it, it just extends what's going on. I think my camera just decided to freeze. Hang on. My gosh. Um, don't worry. I know what's wrong. It's it's really, really normal. It's because I'm using my DSLR camera right now. And after some time, it gets overheated and then it refuses to work. <laughs> so that's what's going on right now. Hopefully I can get it back up. If not, I have a, I have a backup plan. There we go. Um, and now of course it is out of focus, but we can change that. 
Is it okay? Yeah, it's probably a bit out of focus right now. Um, ah, come on, you. This is as good as it's gonna get. Um, yeah, this is the thing with the DSLR cameras. They, they, they stay on for about an hour, uh, an hour and a half, I think, and then they get overheated, then they stop, and then I have to do it again. Um, I think we, uh, I think we're good now. Um, does the second camera still work? It does. All right, what do you say we play some stuff? Um, I really try to get um, as much of the comments as I can. You guys are way too kind. You're writing so many comments. I'm not used to getting all these comments. <laughs> um, I have a lot of requests for Bollywood songs in general, and uh, I am still waiting to find a Bollywood song that I think makes sense for me musically to play. It's not that I don't like the songs that are there. It's just because just because a song is nice doesn't necessarily mean it works as an instrumental. So usually I'm pretty picky about the songs that I decide to arrange. So once I find a song that I think will work good with the stuff that I do, um, I will do it. Um, when are you going to arrange in Yeah Giga <laughs> Oh, Shaney boy. I love you, man. Good stuff. I actually, in Yeah, Geek at Ye, I, I never actually, I don't know the song. I, I know it's a song. I know it's a Danish song and it's a very old song, but I've never, I don't think I've actually heard it before. Maybe it's one of these songs I have to listen to and then I'm like, oh. Um, actually, I think I might be able to put that song on and then you should be able to hear it. Let me see if this song, will I get copyright strike if I play this song? We'll see. I'm just gonna play a little bit of it. Can you hear this, any of you? Yeah, you know what, Shane? I, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm gonna arrange that, but <laughs> it's good fun. <laughs> I actually, I didn't know that song before. I can laugh because it's a Danish song, so I'm not offending anyone. Um, hope it'll be mulig at høre dig live helst på fastlandet. Når du siger fastlandet, så regner jeg stærkt med, at du mener Jylland. Men det, det kommer nok til at ske før, end du tror fordi at øh, jeg har et meget tæt samarbejde med Orkestergraven op i Aarhus, og de har jo en scene deroppe øh, og laver noget, noget forskelligt der, og vi har snakket om flere gange, at jeg skulle op og spille lidt der, så øh, det kommer nok til at ske før, end du tror, at jeg kigger forbi Orkestergraven og giver noget deroppe, og det bliver højst sandsynligt gratis. Øh, så det er jo et win-win for alle. Øh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's good. Good fun. You guys are funny. Um, du på pletten? Er du på falster? I'm a self-learner. Where do I start? What do I do? Any book or YouTube recommendations? Um, it's hard for me to recommend anything. I can only tell you what I did myself when I started playing. Um, and I just started learning songs. So that's the only thing I did. I, I, I didn't look at tutorials and I didn't do any of that stuff. I just searched for songs and then I would try to, I would try to really look at the video to see what they were doing and just repeating, repeating, repeating until I got it right. Yes, that is a lot harder than just watching a tutorial, but also you get so much practice when you have to figure things out yourself, instead of somebody just coming and handing everything over to you on a silver tray, but to try to figure it out yourself, in my opinion, is the best way to go because you you learn how to you know you learn how to use your brain with the guitar, you learn how to think logically with the guitar, uh, which is going to make it way more easier for you in the future to learn new songs without having to rely on tablature or tutorials. 
that's also how you get good at arranging arranging so when i learn new songs right now i don't look at tutorials i don't look at tabs i don't use any of that i've never used any of that because from the very beginning i forced myself to just try to see what people were doing you know on videos i was trying to like uh you know maybe speed it down a little bit and then speed it up all this stuff um, and it will take time and it's hard, but just start with super simple songs, maybe uh, Blackbird or something like that from the Beatles. Um. <clears throat> Hello, do you have tabs for your EDM, but it's on acoustic guitar? I can't see it on your side. Um, I don't have tabs for that yet. Um, my transcriber is constantly working hard on catching up with all my tabs. <laughs> Um, but he can only do one tap a week and I usually do new, a new arrangement every week So he is working super hard to catch up on all the taps um, Hopefully we can um, We'll be able to get back and do all this stuff that that hasn't been done yet um, in the uh, future Have you ever heard of the band Steely Dan? Oh, absolutely absolutely <laughs> One of my favorites is Reeling Through the Years. That's such a good song. Oh, Reeling in the Years. Ugh. I'm not sure what I what I did wrong. All right, let's do um uh, let's play another song. Um All right. I think my camera just overheated again. Yeah, it's super overheated right now, and every time I turn it on, it turns off again. So, what we'll have to do now is to turn that camera off and let it cool because it's overheated and then i'm just gonna go with the this camera right here so we're gonna have to use what we have okay um i'm sorry about that that's how things work so you'll get me from a very good angle right now there we go um all right, let's uh, let's do one more song, and uh, then we'll do uh, a few more questions, and then I think I'm gonna split for today. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna play another song, and um, and then after that, we will answer some more questions, and and um, yeah, okay. All right. This is another original of mine called Lift Alone, if I remember it.
All right, so that is my song left alone. And now that we only have one camera left to use, I'm, I'm gonna have to use this one because the other one is overheated. <laughs> um, oh my God, it's getting hot in here. Let me tell you that. Um, whew. Um, I don't know, how long have we been doing this now for one and a half hour? Wow, time flies. Um, let's, um, let's just use the, the, the last couple of minutes. Let me do one of these. There we go. <laughs> um, let's, um, let's do, let's do some more comments and then, um, I'm going to say thank you so much for tuning in on all this stuff after that. Um, again, sorry about the other camera. It overheated and I, I kept turning off. Um, that's, that's how some DSLR cameras react, and mine is apparently one of them. Um, yeah, that was my song, Left Alone, and if, if you liked it, um, you can get the taps on my website, esmanmusic.com, um, where you can also uh, find lessons. I also offer one-to-one -one lessons through Zoom. Um, so if there's anything you would like to learn from me directly, uh, where it's just you and me, um, you can go and get a private lesson through my website. It's pretty cool. I've been, uh, it's been really fun having, uh, having students so far. Um, and uh, it's only for a limited time. As, 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 as soon as the whole pandemic kind of dies down and I'm back to the touring life, I can't really offer lessons anymore. So now is, now is the time, you know. Um, again, yeah, and, and you'll find tabs on my website too. Um, you can get a CD in there as well, a signed CD. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff there, so um, check it out. Um, and okay, let's um, let's uh, do some more comments. Which frets do you recommend? Um, I don't really have a preference. To be honest, I don't even know what's on my guitars. <laughs> I play I play most of my guitars exactly how I receive them from 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 the builder or the factory. So I don't do a lot of stuff like that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, the main guitars I play are Kepma, and they are perfect for me when I get them. I don't even, I don't need to do anything to these guitars when I receive them. The only thing I sometimes have to do is to bring the action down just a little bit, but that's very normal. You know, when you buy a guitar, uh, and the luthiers or the factory will always make the strings a little higher than usual. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to do. So I don't really do a lot of that stuff. Um... And when I have to do a refret, sometimes, you know, when my guitars need to be refretted, I usually just give my guitars to the builder and I say, just refret it, put whatever on that's already on there. So, yeah, I have no idea. Um, that's the first original I heard from you and now it's actually one of my favorites. Love that. Thank you so much, man. Um... Last four videos I uploaded was based from your covers. Check them out. I've been using tuning my guitars with CGDJ ever since I know you. Big fan from film rooms. Cool, man. Glad you like my stuff. Remember, don't limit yourself to one tuning. You want to be versatile. You know, you want to be versatile. You want to be able to play in, 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 in a lot of tunings. But especially standard tuning is such an important tuning to master. If you ask me, you, you should master the standard tuning before going into alternate tunings, especially if you want to play with other people. The standard tuning is super important. So um, I think this will be the next song I learned. So simple, but damn beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might, it might sound simple. Uh, it's actually not that simple to play. Um, it's, um, you know... Just because a song doesn't have a lot of blah, 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 blah going on, it doesn't mean it's easy. Um, it's it's quite hard to get all the dynamics sitting right and stuff like that. But uh, man, I'm I'm humbled that you want to learn it. Um, um, make sure that you uh, send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook when the song is out. I will love to listen to your cover. Point A alluded to Matru. Madrugada, nogle gange søger du inspirationsmulti. God musik, du laver lige nu. Det vil jeg prøve, Kurt. 
please, bro, I'm just waiting for you to play the Titanic theme song. Yeah, but I am not playing that because you're spamming. That's the only reason why I've not played that song yet. You've been writing it for 50 times. So I do not answer spammers. <laughs> Easy as that. You're welcome, Kim. Hey, Casper, what types of tuning you use? I can't understand. I use a bunch of different tunings, man. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I use a lot of different tunings. If you if you want to know the exact tunings for specific songs, I recommend you go get the tap for the song. Then you'll see the tuning in the tap. But I use I use at least ten different tunings. Um, so yeah. What kind of equipment do you use for recording? Again, I will refer to my website uh, where everything is um, written beautifully. Uh, this is one of the things I use. Uh, which is an Aston Origin mic, and then I just plug my guitar straight into the interface. Easy as that. Um, I don't think I'd, I would get to ask you directly, but would you offer taps for the Odyssey? Um, maybe. We've talked about it, Colin and I. The thing is, creating a tablature is kind of expensive because we at least I do not make my own taps. I, I hire people to do it that know what they're doing so we can get the taps correct. And um, it's, it's, it's really, really time consuming to make a tap where there's two people playing at once. And um, you know, both Colin and I are professional musicians and we need, to, um, you know, we need to make sure that we are making enough money to pay you know, our rent. You know, we need to make a living doing this. So um, we, we really have to uh, but we, 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 we did get a lot of requests for the Odyssey, so it might come out as a tap, but we don't know yet. We, you know, with taps, we have, to, we have to do the ones where there's most requests, you know, so if people are demanding a certain tap, that's the one you have to do. But uh, yeah, um, we, will, we will really consider the Odyssey because uh, you're not the first one who asks. So we, I will write that down and talk to Colin about it one more time. Um, do you play any bass? Um, not really, no. Um, how and why do you know, know a lot of Filipino songs? <laughs> uh, it's actually thanks to a lot of you wonderful people from the Philippines who watch my videos. It, st it started two years ago when I started getting a lot of requests on my channel about f uh, Filipino songs. And then I started getting into Filipino music. I started listening to a lot of stuff and I actually found a lot of stuff that I really became a fan of. So now I, I love listening to Ben and Ben uh, Maria de la Torre, December Avenue. There, there are so many good bands and good singers and musicians from the Philippines. So it started out as actually just me wanted to make a song for my Philippine, Filipino fans, but now I actually love <laughs> Filipino music. I'm actually, I've, I've been so fortunate, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to actually play a Ben and Ben song with the drummer from Ben and Ben. And I am still so thrilled about that happened. So that's on my channel. I'm actually playing with Andrew DePano from Ben and Ben in one of my videos. Uh, the song we did was Lifetime. So you should definitely check that out. Uh, when will you visit India? Hopefully soon. Love your version of Obladi Oblada by the Beatles. Haven't seen many other videos arrangements like this. Thank you so much. I'm actually thinking of redoing that arrangement. Uh, not changing it, but I just I think now I can play it a little better. I can do it a little bit more tight than I than I did two years ago. Um, so um, yeah, it's it's a it's good fun. Are you living with your family or alone? I am not living with my family anymore. I'm 28. <laughs> I moved out. I moved when I was 18, so I'm I'm not living with uh, with my old folks anymore. It's just me. I'm my girlfriend. I live with my girlfriend. Um, and right now we're taking care of a cat. Um, so she doesn't live with us normally, but her family is on vacation, so we're taking care of the cat. Um, hey, Casper, who does your guitar work for you? Setup, maintenance, etc. 
Um, most of the time, I, as I just explained earlier, the guitars that I play right now, which are kept my guitars, they don't really require a lot of maintenance. Um, I started playing these guitars around three years ago, and not once have I had to change the frets or have a new setup. They just, they, they're just built so good. Um, so I don't really need to get a setup on them. Uh, before I use Kepma, I would I would use local guitar builders in Denmark to, uh, depending on where I was. I, I, really, I really never had one specific guy I would always go to, but... Um, and now Siri is going again. Um, so I, w I, I don't really have any go-to guys when it comes to guitar setups and stuff like that, just because I haven't really been needing it ever since I switched to Kepma. Um, um, so I, I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know who I'm going to use the next time I, I break a guitar or they need a new refret or something like that. Um, but yeah, all guitars are built different and and it, I'm not saying that Kepma is the perfect guitar that never needs a setup. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But for me personally, when I receive these guitars, they already they are already perfect to me. They play and feel exactly how I want them to feel, so I don't need a second setup on them. <sighs> what percentage of the time do you practice perform with a metronome? Um, pretty much never. Um, the only time I record with a metronome is if I do collapse with somebody. Um, then I would always play with a metronome to be sure that I'm 100% in time for the other player's sake. Um, so, yeah. But when I record myself, that's actually a lie. I'm lying to you right now. Because if I'm doing something myself, which is multi-track, I've done that a few times. If you go on my channel, stuff like uh, Dance Monkey and when I did the Tarzan song as well. Um, as you can see in the video, there are several me's, Casper's, in the video. So there, I would always record with a metronome to be sure that I'm tight, you know, that I'm on on beat. All right. Um, do you have any hobbies except playing guitar? Um, yeah, um, I like hanging out <laughs> I don't know I'm, I, I think I, I think I'm pretty boring actually I'm just I like hanging out with my friends hanging out with my family um, going out to eat good food uh, playing video games um, I go to the gym a lot that's kind of one of my main interests at the moment so I'm going a lot to the gym um, I don't know <laughs> I'm not I, I used to love to go skiing and stuff like that but um, just haven't had the chance for a long time so um, yeah but at the moment especially during the pandemic one of my big passions has been video games so again if you join my discord as I mentioned earlier I have my my discord channel where you can find the link in my YouTube community section or Instagram or Facebook you, you can join the discord server in there we also do some games together and stuff like that um, yeah any featuring any feed with Daniel Padim? Maybe in the future, if he if he wants to collab with me and he'll send me a message, I'll definitely collab with him. That's for sure. He's a great player. I belong to a Facebook group of Filipino fingerstyle artists. They have this list called Fingerstyle Gods, and Casper's one of them, along with uh, Mike Dawson. Really? That's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. My guitar plays pretty bad, but I can't afford any better. Any tips? Um, you can go a long way. Um, you can come a really long way of getting some new strings, first of all. I don't know how often you change your strings, but if, it hard, if it's hard to play, if that's what you mean by playing bad, if it's not just sounds bad, but plays bad, you might want to change your string and then use a lighter gauge. That's going to make it easier for you to press down. Um, and uh, because of two reasons, first of all, the strings are thinner, so they're not going to be so hard on you. And also they don't cause the neck, that they don't cause a lot of tension on the neck. So it's going to be easier for you to press down. Um, so that's one thing you can do if we're talking high action, if the, if the, if, if, if the action is too high, high for you to play. A new set of strings will do wonders. Uh, another thing you can do 
um, is to adjust the truss rod on your guitar slightly. Again, be careful when you uh, adjust your truss rod. Um, don't do it, don't overdo it, just give it a few notches. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So when you when you adjust it to the right, it will tighten the neck, it will make the neck more straight, it will bring your action down. But seriously, go slow, go super slow. And if you're not comfortable with it, get somebody who knows what they're doing to adjust your truss rod. Most guitar truss rods are situated right, let me see, they're situated right under here, right here. And you just use an Allen key to get in there and, and adjust it. But again, don't do it if you're not 100% comfortable with it. Um, I do it all the time, but I've been doing it for a very long time. So you have to really feel your guitar. If it's resisting too much, you shouldn't go with it. But yeah, I would start with a new set of strings and just going, just going, uh, um, go with a lower gauge, like a lighter gauge. All right. I would say 60% of your fans are Pinoys. You, you actually know, uh, according to YouTube analytics, most of my followers are from the United States. Um, I have a lot of followers from, but Phil, the Philippines are definitely up there. They're definitely up there as as, as one of the the uh, top, you know, in terms of how many people are following me. And I'm super grateful for that. Uh, I thought it was the Philippines too, because I've done a few Filipino covers that, that, that got a lot of views. But um, according to YouTube analytics, most of my stuff, um, most of my followers are from the US. Boro Ali Elixir. Jeg plejede at bruge elixir, men efter det, der er jo kommet ud med deres nye XS-serie, der var jeg simpelthen solgt til Stangle Chris. Så dem her bruger jeg nu. Jeg synes, de lyder bedre, øhm, og de føles bedre at spille med. Så jeg bruger ikke elixir længere. I've changed strings about every second or third months. I've been experimenting with brands and gauges very Current favorite is Ernie Ball Aluminum Bronx. Man, the Ernie Ball Aluminum Bronx are really nice. Really nice strings. Um, again, I don't know which gauge you use. Um, but if your guitar plays bad and you've tried every gauge and it's not solving your problem, um, you might want to check in with a, uh, a, a professional luthier or something like that. What kind of gauge do you use? I use 13s to 56, which I think is called medium gauge. So that's, uh, yeah, 13s to 56. That's what my uh, string set says right here. Song arranging tutorials. I can't really do any tutorials on that because I have no clue how I arrange. As I, as I explained earlier, when I arrange, I listen to the song and then I just start figuring it out. I don't have any step-by-step -step thing that I do. Uh, Um, who's your top acoustic guitar player in the world? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. They are all great. They are all, they're all good in their own way. You know, you cannot compare guitar players. It's, it's impossible, you know? they all have something unique to offer. Uh, so yeah, it's really hard for me to say, but I mean, at the end of the day, for me personally, Tommy Manuel is, he is the guy that we can thank for a lot of things today. Without Tommy, a lot of things would never have happened, you know, and that's because of Chet Atkins, which inspired Tommy. And then because of Chet Atkins, you know, there was Merle Travis before that, and then when we take the percussive genre, there was Pierre Ben Suzanne. And then before Pierre, there was Michael Hedges, you know. So I, in my world, the best players are the legends, you know, the inventors, the people that, the people that turned fingerstyle into what it is today. And without these people, this wouldn't have happened. So I, I, I have a lot of respect for the legends, you know, uh, Mel Travis, Jerry, Ch Chet Atkins, Tommy Manuel, um, 
Pierre Benzazan, Michael Hedges, all the legends, you know, without them, there would have been none of us. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that's, I think that's the, uh, the closest we'll get to that. Um, pickup system in any of your guitars, do you have a favorite or do you avoid inbuilt system? No, man, I have pickups in every single of my guitar. I'm a live performer. That's my main job. So I have, I have pickups in all my guitars. Um, on my website, you can you can get a total overview of the pickups that I use, and one and which guitars they are built into. So, yeah. Oh yeah, that felt good. How tall are you, Casper? I'm 195, so I'm I'm quite tall. Which is six foot four, I think. Have you ever tried playing because a guitar like Marson? No, I haven't. That's not my style. Um, Great, got Ariel Boundary stuck in my head now. It's such a great song, isn't it? Hey man, I just want to say that you're one of my inspiration. Continue playing fingerstyle guitar. By the way, I'm also your Facebook friend. <laughs> um, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Can you play Memories and Passion by Young Soo Kim? I haven't tried playing those songs before. Um, so I haven't, I don't even think I've listened to them yet. But uh, maybe, maybe I'll check it out in the future. Um, all right, guys, I think we're, we're closing in. Um, to those who were here all the way from the beginning, I don't know if anyone have been watching this for two hours now, but, but uh, if, you, if you watched all the way from the beginning, I appreciate you. But if you also just dropped in and watched the last five minutes where we were just talking, I appreciate that as well. I'm so sorry for not being able to provide you with a new video this Friday. I just, this week has been super busy. And honestly, I had a few days where I didn't feel too good. Um, so I just didn't have the necessary time it takes to come up with the arrangement and record everything uh, within a week, like I usually do. So I thought, um, I thought that uh, at least I didn't want to leave your hang in here. So at least I had to go live, you know, and talk to you all. Um, I, I am so, um, I'm so grateful of uh, that, that, that I have you guys as my subscribers. And I want to tell you all that during this pandemic, where my the main part of my job was taken away from me, which was playing concerts. And um, then I suddenly had to start, you know, being a lot more active on YouTube and stuff like that. But it has been a blessing. Um, it's been a blessing having you guys as my subscribers and, and, and every single Friday I look so much forward to, um, I look so much forward to showing you a new video every Friday. Um, and I honestly believe that even though that we are not that many of us, I, um, honestly believe that I have the best subscribers on all of YouTube. Um, you guys are way too sweet and, and, um, I, I am, I am just so grateful. I want you all to know that. Um, um, again, if you, um, wait a second, I'm going to ban this guy real quick. Obviously he has no, he has no sense of situation while I'm sitting here and being all sentimental and he's just, uh, spamming a question that doesn't make sense. Um, just going to put him in time. There we go. Um, so it didn't work. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's just what I wanted to tell you guys that, that I, that I, that I really love each and every one of you. And, and thank you so much for, for subscribing to my channel and following my, my journey. And, uh, I always try to read as many comments as I can on my channel. I always try to, to, to answer as many comments as I can. Um, and, and I just want to let you all know that I really appreciate you. Um, so, Next Friday, we're gonna be back to um, we're gonna be back to a new video. I uh, I am I am starting right now, to I have an idea of what song I'm gonna do next Friday, um, and I hope you'll like it. Um, and um, until until we see again, I just want all I just want everyone to uh, stay safe as usual. And uh, if you want to stay in touch with me, the best thing you can do is to join my new Discord. Uh, I'm 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 very active in there and. We even do video chats from time to time and stuff like that. So, so 
check that out. It's it's all free, and there's a lot of great people in there. Um, so uh, now there's only one thing to do, and that is for me to figure out how I end the stream because I don't do a lot of YouTube live. <laughs> so let's see if we can find the right button to press. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I am Casper Esman, but you pretty much know that. Just sound cool to say. Um, see you next Friday.